So I recently received a comment on a video, this video here where we talk about live streaming and multi-track recording and that uh, the setup, you know, the video here discusses it on the console, but that the setup within X32 edit is a little confusing and that person is not wrong. If you're not used to X32 edit, it can be a little uh, disorienting. And so what I want to do is just kind of make an addendum to that video here with the routing setup within X32 edit. So I'm going to go ahead and play the beginning part of that video now so that you get an idea of what we're trying to accomplish. And then we'll come back into X32 edit and actually complete the setup in this software. All right, so here's a pretty basic setup of what a band might look like. Now, this is only using 16 of our inputs here, and so we're going to just give a quick overview of how this might work, and then we'll look at the console and talk about how we actually do this within the user settings uh, with, with version 4. So... Typically what's going to happen is uh, is output 1 is going to be routed directly out to your USB. Output 2 is going to be directly out to the USB. But uh, and, and so if you grabbed 1 through 16, as an example, uh, for your multi-track recording, then you're going to get all these direct inputs. But what we need to do, if we're going to stream and multi-track record, then what we're going to do is is this would be our stream left and stream right, then we can map these directly over. So I'm going to copy these and paste them here. But then we need to come down here and make 17 and 18 as outputs. And this would be our kick and our snare. You see that? So this one here, if I just grab a little color, and make it yellow. This one here is our yellow one. And so we're just flip-flopping these down to the end. This is the easiest way to do it. Some people go through and, and reset everything so that like one would come over here and be three. So they just, they just bump everything down one. To me, that's way too confusing. I just want to go the easiest route. So I can just map right here, three, four, five, six. And what's going to happen is we're going to do this in blocks of eight in, uh, in the user settings. And so we can just kind of grab these as a block of eight here. And we're just custom setting up, you know, USB one and two to be our stream. Uh, and then again, down here, this would just be a block of eight that's normal. And then we're going to do user settings down here for 1718. Now, the big question that comes in next, Dave, I've got 32 channels of inputs. How do I make this work? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you can't. Um, you've got to you've got to trim down. You you've got to you've got to leave two outputs here, left and right to be your stream. If you're going to multi-track record and stream, you've got 30 additional channels you can stream. If you look at the user output settings, you'll see that they do have up to 48 output uh, channels, but that's only going across AES 50. You don't have the ability to use those going out USB. USB can only take 32 channels going out into your computer. So let's jump over to the actual console now and take a look at how we set this up in this example. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this scene. We do have uh, 16 channels here being used. You can kind of disregard the DCAs on the right. And then we also have 17 to 22 here. Uh, you can see that the last couple channels here, 23 uh, into 32, are not being used. And like explained previously, you do lose the capability of multi-track recording two channels when you do this setup, because we're kind of going to bump everything down by two. Um, and so that's what we're going to do here. In this case, 31 and 32, uh, if you had those channels, would no longer be used. So for sake of example, I'm just going to go ahead and shove mine in at 31 and 32, assuming that you've got kind of a full palette of inputs coming in. So let's go ahead and head up to the routing here. So the routing, I'm going to hit inputs, and I'm going to notice that all of my inputs are coming from AES50A. That's that's uh, because we've got a stage box, 32 channel stage box, so an S32 up on stage. When I go to card, card is going to be the important one, and you can see that I'm already set up for live streaming 
uh, or something with user outputs because I've got one through eight is not set to AES 50A. It's over here in the user out section. So we're gonna explore that in a minute and see what we have set up. But do note that we have user, uh, sorry, we've got AES 50A for nine through 32. So that will change a little bit. And again, we're gonna go through this example. So let's come over, we're gonna start out by making this really easy. And instead of doing AES 50A and jumping back and forth between that and users, we're just gonna set these all as user outs. So we'll come down here and this way our card is going to get custom user outputs all the way down. That way we can just set up everything in user out and not have to deal with flipping back and forth. So what we see when we come to user out is that we have uh, for output one and two, we have mix bus 11 and 12. That's my live stream mix. So my live stream mix is 11 and 12 and I'm sending that out USB one and two and that's going to be going into my my OBS software and my example maybe you've got vmix or some other streaming software that you're using uh, on your computer but we've got that now from there what we want to do is grab AES 50A and we're going to kind of fill out the rest of these we don't want to change these um, so that our DAW for multi-track recording uh, isn't super confusing. We want to keep channel three as channel three, channel four is channel four. So how do we do that? All right, we've got one and two selected from our outputs. The next thing we're going to do is come over here and hit AES 50A, this block. And now we can come down and select three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see what we did there? So one and two is our live stream. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight are our input channels. So the next thing we get to do is come down here for output nine through 16. And we're really just gonna click on a straight matrix here. Nine through 16 is mapping one to one. We're gonna do the same thing for 17 to 24. We're just gonna click through these. Now this is where it gets a little bit more confusing because remember we have input channels one and two that we still wanna record we're gonna be giving up channel 31 and 32. All right, so we're gonna come in here, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. So now what we have to do is go back up here to AES 50A, and now we can click on one and two up here. So do you see what we did? Uh, it's, it's again confusing because we're, we're dealing with these blocks on a horizontal basis from left to right for our outputs. And then we're looking at the mapping up and down for what we're, uh, what we're selecting our channels from. But this right now is gonna set up where we've taken USB one and two is our live stream. And we can see that up here. USB one and two is our live stream. Everything else three through 30 maps directly from AES 50 and then we grab our AES 51 and 2 and we toss that at the end down here uh, in channels 31 and 32. Now what might that look like in the DAW? I'm going to open up my um, I'm going to open up Persona Studio 1 and I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how I might map this in the DAW and and show you that part. All right, so I'm here in Studio One, and I've gone ahead and opened up just a new project, uh, a new song, excuse me. And this has a template that is already mapped for the X32, and it's got 32 channels. So if I look here on, on the left-hand side, you can see where it maps all the way, one to 32 inputs. And that gives me in the, uh, in the browse section, or in the mix section, excuse me, at the bottom, that gives me all of my inputs. You can see here on the left, I've got one, two, three, and all the way to the right, I have inputs 31 and 32. Now this is a one-to-one -one mapping. So right now, what would happen is if I recorded everything, this first one would end up being actually a live stream left, and then this one would be live stream right is what they would end up coming in as. But let's say that I have kick and snare on inputs one and two, they would be all the way down here. 
you know, this would be my kick and this would be my snare. So I've got a couple options. I can just leave it like this and record it and know that it's like that. Uh, I can do that. That's not a problem. Uh, I could come in and if I wanted to keep everything in line, I could come in and I could change this to be input 31 instead of input one. And this could be input 32 instead of input two. That would make this my kick and this my snare. That's typically what I do is I remap them at the input level here so that all of my, uh, all of my faders in my mix section are in the same order as my console. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to, to recognize. And if I come down here, maybe this, this one, if I do want to record my live stream into this as well, just for later playback or usage, then I could come in here and I could map this to input one and this one here to be input two. So this to me is the easiest way to do it. I just remap the inputs and then I am set up for the multi-track recording to come in. Then all of my faders on the, on the uh, DAW here, when I look at them this way, they're all mapping just like my console. And I know that 31 and 32 would end up being my live stream that I could choose to record or not record, but they would be going out to my live stream anyway through that streaming software. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments section if you've got any questions about this. Also, if you need support, if you, you get through these videos and you can't figure out how to do anything, uh, you can go to the website, which is here, and that you can fill out the contact card and we can start a conversation about doing some uh, individual consulting for your venue, your group, your setup, and get you all squared away, sometimes in a quicker fashion than doing it by yourself. All right, well, thanks so much. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.